Poulton Station. It's uh, 22,000 hectares. Um, it's a high country station running merino sheep, um, Hereford cattle, and um, red deer. And uh, there's 14,000 sheep, um, 1,200 cattle, and 6,500 deer. Uh, we have a staff of 10 do all their own um, work on the farm other than shearing. Uh, try to finish all our, our livestock now. We've uh, diversified over the last few years so that we were uh, mainly a store place originally and now we've gone into uh, finishing all our, all our fawns um, and getting them away at uh, 15 months of age. Um, same with our lambs, fattening our lambs and doing our beef. The area is as I said, Mackenzie country, so it's other than today, it's um, got a low rainfall area, so it's got a lot of desert desert land, prone to droughts, prone to um, very cold winters. We range in temperatures from, uh, in the summers we're regularly in the 40 degrees, and in the winters we are quite often down to minus 15 and lower, uh, regularly minus 10 for the winter. So um, it is an extreme climate, but um, during the summer it can uh, grow grass when we get the right temperatures or we put the water on. It's um, a, a nice healthy climate but a cold one. Um, we're standing in the stony stream right now and this stream it actually has a catchment area of over 400,000 acres so um, rainfalls here are quite uh, infrequent so like in the last five months we've hardly had a, a shower or two so when it does rain uh, a normal rain for us is around about 10 mils um, but if we do get a two or three inch rainfall um, you know a, a reasonable one over two or three days this these catchments and that's why this shingles like this it shifts a lot of water so we have to be available for it and they can come at any time our annual rainfall is only um, about 14 inches. The stream like this dries out because of the very alluvial soils and shingles as you can see just disappears for most of the summer. So that environmentally causes a few problems. We've got quite a lot of um, border dike irrigation and some spray irrigation which is reliant on it but um, when you get a drought like we've just been through we're restricted with a low flow and that causes some um, problems on our, on our deer block for uh, feed for, for stock and for water access for troughs and, and a natural water stream. So um, it does cause quite a few issues. This is the header race down the outside and then we've got sub races running off across each, each block and each block's watered from there but they're all fenced off. So you can see the deer haven't been able to get at this. So You'll see areas where they can get because I have to give them water every now and again. And I'll show you what we've been doing there to try and stop oh, yep. it shifting yep. too. This is the, um, the briar berry. We're covered with a, with a lot of briar in this country. That's our main weed. But um, there's uh, a couple of groups in New Zealand that are actually harvesting this stuff. And the, the, they har harvest those berries and take out the vitamin C. So in the centre here it's quite strong pips. Here's the pips of it. You look on the outside in here. The briar berries are to the bottom of the bushes. Look inside. There's none. There's none. The if, uh, and there is at the moment because the deer have been out there for a while but as soon as you put deer back in a block with briar on it the first thing they do is clean every berry they can find. So they like them. Love them. They walk around and eat every single berry. Mm. So we use the deer at different times of the year to actually manage the briar weed. Yep. Now outside the deer farm we have to control the briar with um, metsulfan and helicopters. Okay. To open the gullies up because the sheep won't eat it. Yep. The cattle will but they just spread it. So. Okay, so this is um, the stony stream, so it's, a, it's the water where we take our, our water for the irrigation um, and that's just behind me there, there's a weir where it's taken off and that turns it around onto the flats for water diking, a control gate, just over in behind that spray broom there, but you can see what's running over top of the weir and going on down, we're still just in the foot of the hill at the moment. 300 metres out from here, this water just disappears into the shingle, which it does every summer. So where we were looking before, where there was absolutely no water, same stream, but just disappeared into the into the shingles. So at the moment, this was measured on 
uh, Monday. Um, there was 495 litres a second of water flowing down this stream. So there's nothing been, been able to be taken this year for water dike irrigation since the 19th of January because of the low flow restrictor further down. This is where um, the irrigation comes around from our water take in the Stony River. It comes around to what we call our control structure. So when I'm water diking, on the, the right hand side there, fast side, we've got a canal going down which will turn it down. I can turn the water on, it can be measured with that staff gauge there. Um, at the moment it's off. And this other way is where we're using to uh, for a stock water race. Plus at the moment I'm running water right around that and bringing it into the lower reaches of Stony to keep the river flowing for the trout and the fish down the very lower reaches. So that's just running around for recreational purposes to be honest and a little bit of stock water. They also have um, stock water trough taken off a sieve in there and water tanks in behind where you're standing. I turn the irrigation on from that winding gate up there, the border dike irrigation. I can turn 320 litres of water down here. When I turn it down, it, that gives me an idea of what the height of it is for the wee staff gauge. But inside here is a telemetry gauge. And that's just a solar panel to run it. And that's real time, all time, straight back to ECAN. And I've got it as well. So they monitor that the whole time. That black pipe down there with the, yep. And then they come every month and put a manual measure in there just to make sure the calibration is right. So this is how it's measured. So they can tell me, like, right now, that if it was running, they could tell me exactly how many litres yeah. a second were running past this yeah. staff gauge. Look at this pond. We have to push here on the other side of it. And so they're all there's three ponds in a series. Those yep. three ponds. They are basically dry at the moment because of our drought this year. These ponds, we put them in six or seven years ago to catch the sediment and the nutrients shifting off the border bike irrigation. Um, and that was what we believed would be a real advantage to stop um, um, the discolouring of the water, the soils moving and all those sort of things, and the P and the N shifting. But we found that by, by creating these man-made ponds, which are only about a metre deep, um, they just become a duck haven where up to thousands of ducks came in here in the drought because the only green grass was what we'd watered and they were just flying from the green grass to those ponds and crapping in it. So um, the ponds actually ended up, we found after our monitoring, we were measuring the water going into that pond and coming out of that pond and the P had doubled between 150 metres. Because um, the ducks were just living on the grass going straight to the pond and just using it as a toilet. So what we created and we thought we were actually doing well ended up being detrimental. So we've found now we've actually bypassed the ponds this year and taken it in through the, the swamps itself and just left the living swamp going. We won't actually have large water sources to hold it. Um, in the winter, we, um, after all our fawns have come with the pats and they get too cold, we bring them back up onto these foothill paddocks just because um, it's warmer we're up above the clouds is a wee bit too and it's uh, a little warmer and we hard feed them on baleage and grain but because the water can quite often be frozen in troughs we have to have creek water available for them to get their water source so you can see this is the water coming on around that same water race but to stop them muddying it we line all the edges with shingle so they can actually get access to it in small points in the paddock but they don't wallow it and, and um, turn it to mud in the Thing. so the water stays reasonably clean the whole time so they can get access to flowing water but we line it with shingle just to stop them from getting away and every paddock all the way around is, um, from there on right around is where we feed them we'll, we'll feed 1500 2000 fawns on these paddocks for winter for 110 120 days and they've got access to to the water on the bottom of their paddocks all the way around but the whole thing's been lined with shingle Okay, so um, where I was talking before, where um, our border dike irrigation is uh, from the, where we turn it in at the tape, brings it through, comes on through that irrigation, can drift right down, and then comes into where we had our settling ponds, but, and then it used to run into what we call our filtering building area, which is all these willows. Now we've bypassed the, the, the ponds, and we just run it straight into these, this swamp area here, filters out all the nutrients, and settles any soil shift from uh, um, seasonal flushes of rain off the hill before it goes on down the stream behind me and enters into Lake Enwood, which is only another K further on down. I know are uh, um, basically a weed, but 
this is our filtering unit for the whole of our water bike irrigation. And the catchment of the hill to be perfectly honest. So it's a filtering unit for the whole lot.